Hello again, Gay Master here, aka True Old GM. So, now that we've gone through the character creation process and we have chosen all of our parameters and skills, we're going to go through the mechanics of how to use those skills. Now, keep in mind, this is how I choose to do it, but I'm, it's going to give you a general idea of how you can do things if you want to do it differently. So, one of the... Ooh, not that screen. Yes, that screen. So one of the things you're going to want to do is, we're gonna to go to this speech area, is you're gonna to want to create um, variables, obviously, for each thing. So um, this is, for example, a simple speech op 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 opposing role. So the enemy has the parameters, and I basically made, an like, so if you go to this guy here, when he shows up, so I create, each of these, uh, the event itself has all the parameters that it starts off with. And then in the common events, I make a separate variable where the enemy awareness equals the event awareness. This then allows me to sort of manipulate it within the common event, but still have that in place if I need to use it later. So for example, the enemy awareness in this speech, because awareness is going to be the parameter it's opposed to, is going to be equal to the event. And then the enemy's defense that, you know, the um, variable that I use for all the defenses are going to be equal to the awareness multiply that by five and then add that level modifier we talked about in the last time so that the enemies all have this is how you can create enemies that get more powerful as you level without having to create a lot of enemies is just give them this mod this modifier so that all of their skills go up by about two every single time you level up and it i haven't really tested this out in the long term but in theory it makes sense and basically the higher and lower their abilities are also the fact too that when you go into this you then set up um, your your skills this isn't actually the skill level this is what you're going to end up adding to it so you go in here and so this will make it so let's say you're you're level five this is gonna make and you have you have an awareness of five this is gonna make it 25 plus 10 is 35 and then let's say you have a you know let's let's say this is not defense let's say this is guns so your gun skill is going to be 35 and then you have that 15 in there then you would create an additional line here where you add this defense to your gun skill so that, that plus 15 so that means that it's going to be a 50 so it'd be about 10 skill points lower um, at level one. May, yeah, maybe about eight points lower at level one. So the point is, is it does, the, the enemies do improve as your level goes up. So getting back to this. So then this is, I think, one of the most important aspects of being able to do these events is the random skill rolls. So this is, I'm not sure how complicated this is going to be explaining it, but let me do my best. So you've got this parameter I'll set here. So the event awareness, um, multiply it by five. So let's say if it's level one, that's going to be, and let's say this is five, so that'll be 25. It'll be a 27 defense against the speech modifier. So 27. Then you take a variable that I call enemy random, and you make a random variable for the enemy and one for the character. Minimize it 1 to 100. So there you go. And then you times that by this total defense. You're, whatever you get here, 1 to 100 times 27. So if you get 1, it's 27. If you get 100, it's 2,700. Then what you do is divide that by 100. So what that does is, let me see if I can open up paint so you have a number one to 100 and then you times that by your skill and then you divide that by 100 so if you take this out you know you take your one to 100 divided by 100 what that does is this equals now a percentage 
So if your number here is 50, that turns it into 50%. Multiplying it by the skill, so your skill of 50% of 27 is going to be 14 when you round up. So essentially what this allows you to do then is generate a number between 1 and 27. So once again, make a random number between 1 and 100, multiply it by your final defense or whatever skill you're using, so that's this one's 27, and then divide that by 100. So that'll give you a number between 1 and 27. And then something I do, so you do the same thing with like the player. And something that I do is because, so let's say that you have an enemy defense of 20 and you have a character speech skill of 30. Essentially you're doing a 1 to 30 versus a 1 to 20, which means there's really more chance than not that the enemy is going to beat you on that skill roll. I think there's probably like a 1 in 3 chance of you actually beating him, which is kind of lame considering the fact that you have a higher skill and a higher parameter. It almost defeats the purpose. So what I then did is whatever you end up on that one between 1 and 27, I then multiplied that back by his awareness skill, which is 5. So it can be anywhere from if he got a 1, it would be 5, or if he got a 27, that would be whatever 27 times 5 is, 270. Um, so 135. So we're near between 100 or 5 to 135. And then the same thing for this guy, for the, the uh, character is a lot more simple because the parameters are already programmed into the character. Um, between 1 and 100, and then the random times the character's gab skill. So if the character had like a 5 in personality, that would make it a 25. And then say they dumped all their starting points. And they so they had 10, so that would make it 35. So number between 1 and 35 divided by 100, um, and then times that by personality. So that's anywhere from 5 to 35 times 5 is 175. So you have 5 to 175 versus 5 to 135. There's a little bit more of a chance that they'll be able to to win. So the high and that makes sense because the higher the parameter, the better they'd be at it in the first place. So somebody with 100 skill points in, um, let's say, if somebody with 100 skill points in Gab that has, which is my basic speech uh, skill that I'm using, um, would, if they have a, a personality or a charisma of one, is going to be naturally less effective than somebody that also has 100 skill points but has a personality of five. So that's somewhat a way that I made it so the parameter itself can help the skills level as well as make it so if you have a higher skill level and a higher gap, it helps you to make it so there's a lot more of a chance that you'll beat an enemy if you have a higher skill. Because if you didn't, that would be kind of lame. And then once again, I have one for Intimidate. But that's that's sort of how opposing skill roles work, is you want to have your skills as variables, and you want to do this random. So one more time, we'll just go over this just to, just to be sure. Random variable between 1 and 100. Multiply it by your variable, scare is my intimidate check slash taunt or whatever. Divide that by 100 so that, that 1 through 100 divided by 100 creates a percentage. Multiplied by your skill creates a random number between 1 and that variable. Now, what you can also do, you don't have to do it this way. If you want to create, say, a D20 based game, which I know that Wizards of the Coast has their system reference document, so you can use the D20 system to create pen and paper games. I'm not sure if that transfers over to the computer or not, so don't take my word for it. Maybe it does, and you can create like a, a D20 game like Knights of the Old Republic. But even if it, does, if it doesn't, you could still use the random number generator to generate like six-sided dice, you know, so you don't have to do it this way. You can do the traditional pen and paper feel where you, the random number generator is used to generate numbers on a dice and then add your skill levels to it. I just chose to do it this way. I think this is a little bit more of the Fallout style feel as opposed to the Dungeons and Dragons style feel, but either way works, you know, you can, you can do it either way. 
Um, so that's an overview of opposing skill roles. There's um, you know an event for for guns. So if somebody shoots a gun versus the the defense against that gun. There's speech, intimidate, an unarmed skill, a melee skill, and a lot of these are, are sort of sub common events of what's going to eventually be the battle event. And this and this is gonna probably be like oh two or three videos long when we get to this. So there you go. That's an overview of how to do opposing skill roles. Um, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, leave some for me in the comments. Uh, any suggestions on how you would do things differently, leave those in the comments as well. Uh, like and subscribe. This one was a little bit shorter because I wanted to leave the the two main things that skill rules are based upon for later videos. So the next video, possibly two, will be going over the sneak skill on screen. This is So this is going to incorporate what we just talked about, opposing skill roles, along with that distance formula. So it's, I mean, that, that took me about a week to perfect. The battle system that it's even more complicated took me about a week and a half, just working out all the bugs. So that's this. Um, Thank you very much and have a good day and see you next time.